Hi, I'm Greg from RV Haulers. I'm located here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. But that doesn't matter, I deliver. I love to deliver all of my RV haulers right to where my customers are. Well, in this case, Doug and Lisa have customized a 48-foot New Horizons coach, a fifth wheel. It is done. It is sitting there in Kansas. And the RV hauler behind me that we've named Baxter is done as well. So I'm going to be hitting the road tomorrow and this is a pre-delivery video. So this is a chance for Doug and Lisa to take a nice up close look at their RV hauler and make sure everything is to their liking before I hit the road and marry it up with that 48 foot New Horizons. Let me show you around Baxter. A few of you folks might have seen some of my pre-delivery videos and I'm going to stick with my formula here on Baxter again. The lenses top and bottom have been polished. We located, this is a used deer bumper, a chrome one. So there's a little bit of, there's some marks in it. If you look, you can see that there's a little bit of scratching in it, but overall we saved, well, we saved quite a bit of money on this deer bumper, so we've chosen to go with it. You'll see a new bug screen has been installed in the back. And as soon as you come around the side of this 2011, still under warranty by the way, you're going to see that Lisa and Doug chose to do something quite unique. We were sent paint samples from their New Horizons coach and those decals are going to really tie this rig together with their New Horizons when we get down there to Kansas. We've got great Michelin steers, polished the fronts, hubcaps. That certified clean idle decal that was left on the side, that uh, makes it a little bit easier when we travel to California. They like to see that. So the plan is that Baxter is going to get a bed eventually. We're going to put a deck back here, but right now Doug and Lisa are going to travel a little bit and just see what they really need. So for the time being we've put on some poly fenders to protect the back of the sleeper. But one thing that we did do is we installed one of my monster sized drum boxes or storage boxes. Stainless steel hardware, big stainless T-handles, locking of course. I'll show you inside there in a moment. I'd like to show you the drum box now. So I make mine really as big as I can <clears throat> that works feasibly for the steel size and as well to leave enough room to get in to fill our fuel. So you'll see that it works just perfectly. You can get uh, the, the big commercial fuel, ha the handles the, uh, down into the tanks. Uh, this drum box is six feet wide, 16 inches deep, and seven feet high. I already mentioned a few things that set my drum boxes apart from some others that I've seen. So all of the locks are keyed alike. And you can see a little bit of moisture. I actually did um, a, a test. I put, took the pressure washer and aimed it right at the doors. And you'll see that the moisture came to here. But these are a, what's called a bulb seal. They actually have quite a bit of compression to them. And the door pushes against these and seals it really well. The left-hand side, in Doug and Lisa's case, has been left full height so that we can put tall objects in there such as ladders. If you look at the locks themselves they're quite a nice um, 
design. Very, very well built. They're made by buyers. And something else that I feel very proud about is that you're going to see all of my boxes are sheared and formed. So take a look. There is not a weld on any of these corners. These are all using a, uh, these are sheared and formed. So these corners are bent and the only seam is in the back. So this is one massive piece of steel with the only seams being welds at the bottom. That's just some dust down there. <clears throat> but what it means is they're extremely strong. So because of this uh, bend around here, they've got substantial rigidity. I, don't, I can't do this with one hand, but if you try to bend the doors, they're nice and stiff. Very little mo movement in them. And also, Again, if you've seen some of my bed designs, I really like things that are flush. I don't like lots of drip edges and kind of stuff sticking out because all of those points are areas where things can rust. So the whole box has been... Well, let me open the other side here. The whole box has been carefully sandblasted inside and out. And this design, we've left the bottom shelf a little bit taller so that full height um, propane tanks can fit in there inside of a milk carton in the bottom so they don't shake around. Now remember, <clears throat> uh, this is a bit of a, a temporary design, so I, I put a 6 inch riser on the bottom of this drum box because that's usually the thickness of the bed that would go back here if there was a smart bed. It also is important to have that little raise in there so that we can get to the, f the filler caps on the fuel tanks. A little bit of wind coming up, but these shelves lipped this way so that things can't slide uh, into that big open section. This opening is usually, I make from this shelf to this shelf, that's 16 inches. And of course, all of these are custom made. So if you want shelves in different locations, just let me know. But there's a quick tour of our drum box design. Just temporarily, I took some of my used aluminum decking that came off some of the other trucks and put it back here just to close things in, make it look a little bit finished. We've cleaned up the frame a bit. Again, it's a bit of a temporary solution for a few months while Doug and Lisa travel. There's our favorite E.T. hitch from Henry Schmidt in Florida. And, oh look, a few mosquitoes. I won't bring those with me. Because this is a 2011, there are very few blemishes in the paint. It's in super shape. Of course, the couple that drove this truck were very particular about how it was treated. Let's go inside. Oh, I'll mention one other thing. There were some small marks in the backs of those mirrors so I replaced those those are brand new we've got new glass and the driver's side was done as well Doug and Lisa also chose to put a little bit of a personal touch on each side of the truck We've also put in, for Doug and Lisa, the minimizer floor mat system, the three-piece system. Take my shoes off. There's the direct link brake controller. I've got my GPS in here already. Get 
getting ready for the trip. But this is a Voyager camera system. I need to turn the key on. It's keyed to the ignition. There you go. You can see that the camera's looking right at the hitch. So you'll be able to see the trailer coming up into the head there. What we also do in these situations, now this Voyager system is not one that I usually uh, uh, work with, but it's the camera and display system that New Horizons uses. So I work very carefully with New Horizons, very closely, and they have sent me the cables, the monitor, everything that will interface with the cameras that are already on Doug and Lisa's trailer on their fifth wheel coach. So these seats are top of the line, leather ones. That little handle that you see right there tells you that these seats turn and spin backwards. Uh, always put the plastic on the floor just to make sure that uh, no damage happens. Of course everything has been steam cleaned. This was a non-smoking truck, but it's all been detailed very carefully. And we've got microwave, the inverter <clears throat> is installed underneath that cushion or that seat back there. Refrigerator is running. I'll load that up with water for my trip. And a few little things, um, assortment of fuses. Spare air governor, should always carry one of those. These are all the uh, window coverings for the back windows. All the manuals, and I didn't point it out yet, but we also have a dash camera uh, that records everything that goes on outside the front window. We've also put in a unit in more of a high-end CB radio. I've also put in an extra <clears throat> A set of cigarette lighter outlets, oh, a little dark, there we go, up there. It also has two outlets for charging your cell phones, but this lets us keep, you know, um, power for the tire pressure monitoring, and there's the camera running on the dash, recording everything out the front. This can flip up out of the way. It doesn't impede the use of the sun visors at all. It's a good spot for it. This cable, by the way, is just to my GPS, so it's temporary. Usually there's nothing hanging between the top and bottom. So there's a few things that they'll be using. I've got a few spare parts that were left over from the monitor, and this is the window covering for the skylight. That thing unravels and covers the top window to make it nice and dark if you want to sleep in there. Of course it has the curtains, so these curtains go all the way around the windshield. There's another one there that covers the other half. <coughs> and here's the tall curtains. What it does is it divides the room in half this way. It goes in behind the two seats. So if somebody wanted to be in the back and sleep while someone was driving and make it dark, you can do that. Uh, down here, <clears throat> in this cubby, I've taken care of getting a new porta potty for Lisa and Doug. It's brand new, and it's exactly the right height so that it fits in that <clears throat> storage box, in that cabinet. It's one that you pump up so you can put water in here and it flushes and it separates from the bottom so that you can empty it easily. But you'll see it fits just perfectly in there. Of course that's one of the things that makes this a motorhome. In most states. Between the microwave, separate air conditioning and heating in the back, sleeping, 
cooking facilities and refrigerator, that's what makes it a motorhome. Well, Lisa and Doug, I'm ready to hit the road. Uh, take a look at this video, make sure that everything we've discussed and in our detailed worksheets has been included in the truck. If you see anything that catches your eye, let me know. Else, probably tomorrow, I'm going to hit the road. I've got about, realistically, about 30 hours of driving to make it to the New Horizons factory. But I'm looking forward to seeing that nice new trailer of yours, Lisa. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about our RV haulers, our website is www.rvhaulers.ca. Thanks.